All right, so now I'd like to talk about polar and nonpolar molecules. So in, uh, in one of my videos in my Lewis Theory playlist, I talked about the concept of bond polarity. And if you'd like to check out that video, I'll provide a link for it uh, either in the description box or in annotation or both. Anyway, I talk about uh, bond polarity in that video. And what determines whether a molecule is uh, overall polar or nonpolar, uh, that has a lot to do with both the polarity of the chemical bonds within the molecule and also on the shape of the molecule. So that's why I'm, uh, I've decided to stick this video in the uh, playlist on molecular shape. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to review briefly uh, the concept of uh, polarity of chemical bonds. Uh, remember that uh, bond polarity is caused by a difference in electronegativity. And electronegativity is basically uh, the overall tendency of an atom to attract electrons. And bond polarity is characterized by an unequal distribution of electrons. So uh, in the case of hydrogen chloride, uh, the bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine is uh, polarized towards chlorine, the more electronegative atom. And that's usually represented by an arrow uh, that points toward chlorine or the more electronegative atom. Uh, notice that the tail of the arrow kind of looks like a plus sign and uh, that's kind of a good uh, little you know, trick to, uh, you know, that might help you remember uh, that the hydrogen in this case has the partial positive charge. So the way that uh, polarity of chemical bonds is usually quantified is uh, with the dipole moment. And the uh, dipole moment is actually a vector quantity. And the interesting thing about vectors is that they have both a magnitude and a direction. So things like velocity, force, acceleration, uh, those are all vectors. So not only do they have uh, a magnitude to them, but they also point in a certain direction. So the interesting thing about vectors, uh, let's see, if I have a vector that's pointing in a certain direction, and I'll call that uh, vector A, vectors are usually uh, denoted by a, a little arrow over the symbol. So if I have a vector A and I have another vector B, that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to vector A. And I add those two quantities together. Then I'll get zero. Those vectors uh, will cancel out. And I think this zero needs an arrow on it because it is a vector sum. So if I add two vectors that, are, that point in opposite directions, then I'll get zero. So, uh, in the context of uh, polyatomic uh, molecules, this really doesn't uh, come up in diatomic molecules. Uh, if you take a look, uh, look back at hydrogen chloride, uh, if you have, a, you know, there's only one bond in a diatomic molecule, and if that bond is polar, then the molecule is uh, going to be polar overall. So HCl, that's definitely a polar uh, molecule. But when you have uh, polyatomic molecules, the net dipole moment is obtained uh, by taking the vector sum of the individual dipole moments. So it's not my intention uh, to show how to add vectors in this video, um, nor is it really necessary in, uh, in general chemistry. Instead what we can do is uh, we can look at a few common cases and that should be sufficient to determine whether most molecules are uh, polar or nonpolar. So let's look uh, at some common cases. Well, we've just looked at uh, a, this case right here when we have two uh, identical vectors pointing in opposite directions. So if we apply that to a, a, a real molecule, um, I don't know, can you think of any molecules that, uh, that, ha that have this uh, scenario going on? Well, one that I can think of uh, would be CO2. In this molecule uh, we have 
two polar bonds, but because this molecule is linear, as predicted by uh, Vesper theory, it has two electron groups, so it's linear. Uh, those two dipole moments uh, caused by caused by these two uh, polar bonds are going to point in opposite directions, and they are equal in magnitude. So that means that the net dipole moment on this molecule is going to be zero, and this molecule is overall nonpolar. Uh, let's look at another scenario. If I have, let's say I have two polar bonds, but the angle between them is less than 180 degrees. In other words, uh, these two uh, identical polar bonds are not pointing in completely, uh, absolutely opposite uh, directions. Then I will end up getting a net dipole moment. Uh, the net dipole moment is probably going to point somewhere down here this way. And that is, uh, the net dipole moment is going to be unequal to zero. Uh, which corresponds to a polar molecule. So if I look at a molecule uh, like water, for instance, H2O, H2O has two polar bonds in it, but they are pointing, they're not pointing in completely opposite directions. One's pointing this way, and the other is pointing this way and overall your net dipole moment is going to be probably pointing somewhere up like that and thus water is a polar molecule. Uh, let's look at a, another scenario real quick. Um, okay. If I have uh, three polar bonds and they are situated in an arrangement such as they are uh, all identical polar bonds and they are all 120 degrees apart. So this angle and this angle and this angle, these are all 120 degrees. If this is the case, then the vector sum of, these, uh, of all these vectors is going to turn out to be zero. And that's going to be, uh, there's going to be a no net dipole moment, and you'll have a nonpolar molecule. Uh, an example would be, uh, let's say, uh, BH3. If we look at the uh, Lewis structure for BH3, it looks like this boron trihydride. Here we have uh, three identical polar bonds. Hydrogen is actually uh, more electronegative than boron, so they're all going to point this way. And if you were to add those vectors together, you would get zero. So this BH3 would be a nonpolar molecule. Um, let's look at another one. If I have three polar bonds and they are in a trigonal pyramidal arrangement, which is a pretty common case, so each of these bonds is about 109.5 degrees apart, trigonal uh, pyramidal, and there's three identical polar bonds, which I'll represent with these vectors. Then you will get a dipole moment. Uh, the net dipole moment is probably going to point down somewhere this way in that direction, and uh, that's going to be a polar molecule. An example uh, would be uh, ammonia. NH3. 
get the uh, if you do the Lewis structure uh, for ammonia, then it'll become apparent that uh, not only does that nitrogen have three hydrogens on it, but it also has a lone pair. So the molecular geometry of NH3, well, what does that look like? You got your nitrogen in the middle, your lone pair, and then your three hydrogens are going to go trigonal pyramidal. And let's see, nitrogen is the more electronegative atom, so they're all going to point in this direction. And overall, your dipole is going to point that way, and thus NH3 is a polar molecule. Uh, let's look at one more uh, common situation, and then we'll be done. If I have uh, four vectors, or four uh, identical polar bonds, and they are situated in a tetrahedral arrangement, four identical uh, polar bonds uh, in a tetrahedral arrangement and uh, these angles are all 109.5 then it turns out that the sum of all these vectors is going to sum up to zero and you'll have a nonpolar molecule and the classic example of this is methane CH4 methane has a central carbon surrounded by four hy uh, hydrogens that form a tetrahedron. And turns out, if you were to do the math and add those vectors together, then uh, they would definitely sum up to zero. So methane is nonpolar. So uh, there you go. I hope this video has helped a little bit. Uh, those rules won't help nail every single example. And, you know, polarity is kind of a, uh, you know, it's kind of a continuum. Uh, polar and nonpolar are just uh, two very broad uh, categories. So, um, all right, that's it. Take it easy.